Uh, we return now to the conversation that's been bubbling away for quite a while. It was a slightly, I shared, I, mean, I think I shared a story with you before I went away about the strangest public encounter I've ever had since I, um, uh, since I started doing this job, or perhaps more accurately, since I became somebody who, who, who regularly gets recognised in the street. Uh, 99.9% of the time, it's a glorious experience and, and wonderful for the old ego. But every now and then, two or three times, it, it is either odd or, or, or unpleasant. The major unpleasantness being uh, the oddly the second referendum rally when one of uh, little Tommy Ten names goon stuck his phone in my face and, and started sort of spluttering incoherently. But um, the jokes I was making before I went away about a fellow who stopped me in Westminster about three weeks ago and started raving about satanic paedophiles and vaccines in the same breath. I, I sort of had the smile wiped off my face a little bit yesterday when I saw a BBC correspondent in Scarborough coming under astonishing attack from people who seem to subscribe to the same school of thought. And the problem here is that I see a headline today, number 10's COVID passports fuel anti-vax feeling among doubters. And I have this internal dialogue that goes something like this. It goes, well, they're all nuts. I met one of them the other day and he was wanging on about satanic paedophiles. And then the other bit of the dialogue is, well, they can't all be nuts. There's people you know who seem to have signed up to this anti-vax or, or anti-passport rhetoric, which just because you don't understand it, O'Brien, doesn't give you the right to conclude that they're all bonkers. They certainly, I'm pretty sure that some of the people in the public eye who are very exercised by the thought of... Um, I've got it on my phone now. I needed it in Scotland to go to a couple of events at the Edinburgh Festival. So I, I've got the the, 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 the COVID passport. It, it actually even comes up. Let me double check this. Fact check live. But yeah, it comes up on my Apple Pay now. So you, if you've got Apple Pay, you know you can put... You know, I'm not going to turn. nearly turn my phone to the camera then. I don't know whether that would have allowed you to undertake some epic fraud using all my millions in my Santander or First Direct or Barclays account, whatever it may be. Uh, but I'm not going to... Uh, stop it. Get away. Turn the cameras off. Turn the cameras off. I'm conducting an internal audit. But it's on the same uh, app as my COVID passport. So I just literally press it and then the QR comes up. I flash that on my way into a venue. Uh, I'm going to theatre tonight, actually. I shall tell you tomorrow what I'm going to see or what I have seen. I, I, I don't want to spoil the spoil the treat for the family. The QR code allows me to get in. I don't know if I need it in, in, in London theatres. I haven't checked yet. I'll check after the show. But that, that is the thing that everyone's so scared about. Or, or cross. I don't. But again, even what word do you use without offending people? I'm quite happy to offend people who think that vaccine passports are the work of satanic paedophiles. I'm not sure I'm capable of offending you. I think that ship sailed some time ago. I, I, there is absolutely nothing you can do with the... Uh, and I told you what happened at the end of the exchange. This fella is, is, is chasing me up outside the House of Commons. I don't know what counts as a win. I don't really look at these YouTube... Do you ever look at these YouTube... Um, what are they even called? Channels. YouTube channels that you get someone and you... I've seen Michael Gove a few times. Even before he sort of did his flash dance tribute act in Aberdeen the other night. I've seen Michael Gove a few times dealing with it quite well. He stays very calm and, and people sort of yell all sorts of things at him and he, he, he stays quite calm. But I don't know what a win looks like. Does a win look like someone losing their temper? So if I, if, if I start going, Get, leave, leave me alone, you weird satanic paedophile theorist, then that goes up on their YouTube channel. It goes, it's like O'Brien crumbles under proper scrutiny or something like that. I, I genuinely have no idea. And I, I'm not that interested. But it obviously didn't go where it was supposed to go because we get all the way up to Millbank and I'm saying are you still I mean is there still something left to discuss I, 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 I said to you that, that, that surely you've got if there is a massive satanic paedophile conspiracy underway at the moment of which the anti-coronavirus vaccine is part surely you should be out battling the satanic paedophiles rather than harassing me um, uh, in SW1 and on the streets of Westminster, and I could see the poor fella's cogs start whirring. He starts thinking, yeah, do you know what? He's got a point. Maybe I shouldn't be sticking my camera phone in the face of one of Britain's best-loved journalists. Maybe I should actually be out fighting against all of the satanic paedophiles. I should be tracking them down and, and unveiling their vicious, diabolical plan. But here I am 
sticking my camera phone in the face of, of one of Britain's best loved journalists. It's just a ridiculous way to behave. I could see the little cogs whirring, but I stayed very calm, largely because I felt a bit sorry for him. And then we get to the end of our exchange. I said, I'm really going to go into a building now and you won't be allowed to follow me and I'd hate you to get into trouble with the security guards or, or something like that. And, and there's a sort of this wonderful moment. He turns the camera away from me and turns the, he turns his camera phone back to himself. And he goes, well, and, that, and that was James O'Brien. And, um, uh, well, well, he's all right, really. <laughs> I thought that probably counts as a win, does it, in the context of these sort of encounters? Is that is that the best one can hope for as you get to the end of this unravelling spool of madness? And at the end of it, the poor fellow says, well, he's, he's all right, actually. He's quite nice to me. He invited me to tell him to F off at one point. I said, I'm not going to tell you to F off. Tempting though it may be, partly because that perhaps might be what you're hoping to, to pop up on your uh, on your social media channels uh, later, but also because I, I still think of people like you as the victims of these cons. You, you, you haven't come up with the idea that coronavirus vaccines are the work of satanic paedophiles. You, you haven't conjured that notion up yourself and then started to disseminate it around the world. Someone has sold you this pup. Someone has flogged you this lorry load of snake oil. Someone has corrupted you. Uh, really unkindly and unfairly. And although you're on the line between con man and conned, uh, I, I'm still not convinced that you're the person who deserves our uh, our, our disgust and, and, and anger. I think you probably deserve our sympathy, but you certainly deserve calmness in, in the face of these astonishing accusations. So there's that lot. I don't know how many of them there are. I think I recognise some faces that, from the... BBC journalist in Scarborough yesterday and the footage of Nick Watt, the Newsnight political editor, being chased up the street a couple of months ago. I think I recognise some faces, too. And the people that turned up at an apartment block in Shepherd's Bush thinking that it was the BBC headquarters that it had been until, I think, about 2013. And they turned up there. There's a couple of ITV studios there still, a sort of uh, a nod to the heritage of the building. I think they filmed Loose Women there. They turned up at the, at the building where Loose Women is filmed for ITV under the impression that they were about to storm the BBC. And, and I think that, I presume there's the same people turning up to these moments, to these events, whether it's in Scarborough, whether it's outside the Loose Women studio, or whether it is, um, uh, whether it's elsewhere. I, I, I don't know enough about it to comment, but I don't know how much of this problem they represent. Do you see what I mean? I would like to have a sensible conversation about why imposing vaccine passports is likely to make hesitant people even more reluctant to, um, to get a jab. And I don't really want to open the door to people who think that I'm part of a satanic paedophile conspiracy. I, I call me eccentric. I just don't know how helpful or how interesting that would be. And I don't know where the line is. How much bleed is there from one into the other? Do you turn up to one of these things because you've got really strong libertarian beliefs that, uh, that a mandatory vaccine passport system would be a, an appalling affront to your individuality and your independence and and because the cause is so important you're prepared to march alongside people who think there's a satanic paedophile conspiracy going on as well I and mean, is your enemy's enemy your friend or or do you look at them as askance as everybody else does i genuinely don't know anyway i hope we've cleared that up the type what are we going to be talking about this hour you're thinking well i've told you what we're talking about this hour um why don't people want vaccine passports and there's two ways into this, and, and I make no apology for this, because I do have to be careful about allowing satanic paedophile conspiracists onto the programme, onto the air. It's, I don't think it's very good for them. It's certainly not very good for, for the rest of us. But I do want to know how they end up in that place. And the best way we found since this nightmare started is to talk to the people who love them. So... I don't think that having hesitancy about a vaccine passport is the same as thinking that a coronavirus had something to do with 5G and phone masts. I, I, I can see that hesitancy about passports and even to a degree hesitancy about va the vaccine in particular is not... Well, I don't know, actually. That, that might be the topic. That might be the phone in. Does it all sprout from the same source? And what appears at first glance to be sensible is ultimately just as bonkers as subscribing to the school of thought that the vaccine is part of a satanic paedophile conspiracy and or um, designed to allow Bill Gates 
to control our minds? Does it all spring from that well? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Because it seems certainly, doesn't it, to include endorsements of of the nonsense that Donald Trump somehow won the last American election and, and had it stolen from him. But that again. The president of the United States of America is telling you that something is true. I think you can be forgiven if you're a bit credulous or, or, or not really terribly well informed. You can be forgiven for thinking for a moment that it might be. If someone tells you that the vaccine program is the work of satanic paedophiles, I, I'm not sure you do deserve the generosity of spirit involved in, in acknowledging that the president of America is not supposed to lie like that. So you can be forgiven up to a point for falling for it. Quarter past 11 is the time. Um, ring me now and respond to what you've just heard before I give you specific questions to answer. Sometimes those conversations can be more fun, more en engaging, more surprising, certainly, than the ones that are more prescriptive. Here's a question, you answer it. So, so come at all of that from, from whatever angle you please. 03456060973. But I will now give you the questions. Well, first of all, why would imposing vaccine passports make hesitant people even more reluctant to get COVID jabs? This is research involving more than 16,000 people. Number 10 is still planning to go ahead with this in, in within a month. OK, nightclubs and other crowded indoor venues will demand proof that you have been double vaccinated. I, I'm pretty sure that's already the case in France. I, I think even in sort of, you know, boulevard cafes in France, you have to do this. So I would like to hear from other countries about what, what happens where you are and whether it has posed a mighty threat to your liberty. I'm also conscious of being a little bit of a wazzock on this because there must be some sensible and reasonable reasons to, to have a problem with the idea of, of the COVID passport. But the biggest what's the word I want? The biggest uh, offence that you will suffer is that there'll be certain places you can't go into. That's it, as far as I understand it. So that's just fair enough, isn't it? It's, it's, you don't want the vaccine, you don't want the passport, or you don't want the vaccine. I'd be interested in people who are quite happy to have the vaccine, but don't want the passport. That might be a way into the sensible side of this conversation, perhaps. But you don't want it. That's fine. But you can't go here or there. Or even over there. What what is what is wrong with that exactly? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. The public health position is that we protect as much of the public health as possible by denying entry into these sort of places to people who are not vaccinated. And if you can prove that you're vaccinated, you can come in. If you can't prove that you're vaccinated, you can't come in. What's wrong with that? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Hit the numbers now, you will get through. I'll take all, pretty much all comers on this, except perhaps people who think I'm part of a satanic paedophile conspiracy. But of course, if I was part of a satanic paedophile conspiracy, I'm hardly likely to admit it. This is probably a bit simplistic. I'm sure it is. Uh, yeah, I, but, you know, a few of you are pointing out, James is one of them. We grew up not being allowed into clubs. Thankfully, come 1988 in the summer of love, all this changed. But there, there used to be the nightclubs you couldn't go into if you were wearing trainers. They probably still exist somewhere. You can't come in if you're wearing trainers. Post-rave, once rave culture had taken the country in its glorious grip, you'd be mad to wear anything else. And I speak as someone who turned up at the Hacienda nightclub in Manchester in 1988 wearing a pair of rather natty leather brogues. That was not a mistake I made twice. I didn't own any trainers. The only trainers I had were for P.E., uh, it was astonishing, really, when you think how quickly PE shoes uh, became de rigueur for every night spot in the country. But it was it was a rule. You can't come in if you're wearing trainers. OK. And now you can't come in if you haven't been vaccinated against coronavirus. Yeah. Difference. Oh, three, four, five, six, oh, six, oh, nine, seven, three. David is in Hales, Owen. Lovely part of the world. David, what would you like to say? Hi, Joe. It's nice to speak to you. First time caller. Welcome aboard. Um, so basically, um, I just wanted to talk about my dad yes. um, and how he got into the anti-vaccine movement. So it basically, it started with 9-11 and then it moved into flat earth and then it moved into anti-vaccine. And basically, he's kind of become part of a group and they're always looking for the next thing, the next conspiracy to, to do. And I, I, I firmly believe that it's like having a place yeah. um, of, of belonging, these people... Um, my, my dad's uh, like uh, divorced and stuff like this. Right. Um, so he's a bit. He lo wants... He's a bit lonely. 
Yeah, I think he's lonely, and oh. this this group give him um, a sense of belonging. Um, if that makes sense, it makes absolutely perfect sense, and I can hear the love that you have for your dad in your voice. This yeah, is not an yeah. easy conversation to have, is it? Really? No, no, it's not. He's your dad, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but the the, the 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 answer to your question is: um, if the government force if the government bring in the vaccine passport, yes. they will say that they're forcing you to have it. But they're not. I mean, how many night, How often does your dad go clubbing? Yeah, I know. I'm trying to think what the nearest nightclubs are. It's a while since it was Weaver's Wine Bar in Kidderminster, I think, last yeah. time. It was that one near the old swimming baths. I can't yeah, remember what yeah. it was called. But, I mean, your dad does not go clubbing on a regular basis. No, he doesn't. But what he'll say is then they, they'll bring it in nightclubs first and right. then they'll, they'll make you have one to go to the pub. And there's always an answer for everything. Yeah. They'll, 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 that's just the way they behave. And no matter what you tell him. Um, oh, dear. Yeah, it, it's just, I, I don't know. It's so and hard and what's the, and what's the well, It is hard and confusing. And, and I think the next stage needs to be setting up groups online to, to help people like you, help people like your dad, yeah. right, rather than them having all of the, like the devil having all the best tunes, so to speak. So what, what, yeah. what's, the, what's the final answer? What's the, what, why, why do the government want us to have passports for reasons that are not protecting us from coronavirus what's the what's the secret reason if you like that that, that, that he subscribes to uh, control he, he 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 thinks that you know if we've got these passports we have to we, we're somehow being monitored and controlled and and all and all this all and why this do they that, because this, i don't know whether this might help this is what i usually do and then why do they want to do that why does the government want to do that I don't know. Oh. I don't know. The, and the, where did your dad... I, I, I always tell him, I say, because um, he, he says like, about the vaccines, about how they're dangerous and stuff and how they can, how they're wanting to track everybody. I said, well, you walk around with a phone in your pocket, which is tracked <laughs> anyway. Yes, you do. You and do. you're on the internet all the time. Oh, it's just YouTube. It, it's become... It, it all seems to stem from YouTube. And he watches and... these videos and believes every word they say. Have you got any siblings? Yes, I have. And do you share your frustrations with each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's we're, the hard we're thing. The same. That is the hardest thing, isn't it? And and I don't know whether they're listening to this now. Not your siblings. I mean, people like your dad are listening to this now, thinking that we're the sheeple, we're the we're yeah, the mugs. That's we're exactly the mugs what that... he will call us. Yeah, Gosh. that's what he'll call. It. And I'll and I'll send send him a, you know, the the link later to to this, and hopefully he listens. Well, I, yeah, and let's send him our best. I, I you know, and and tell him that if he wants a pint of Bathams. In uh, in Hale Zone sometime soon. There's no harm whatsoever in proving that you've been vaccinated, and and ultimately the why of it, it becomes, I hope, the best way of diffusing this position. Why do they want to control us? Oh, you've got to pay attention to history. Look at all these other. This is a government that they they go on holiday when you know, there are epic moments of of historical and political import. Boris Johnson is and isn't on holiday this week. I don't know if you've seen that. He's gone to the West Country with his family. I think they're on holiday, but he isn't. He's just with them while they're on holiday. Um, I, again, you know, it's hardly the action of a man who's desperate to control every aspect of our existence. I, I, I guess I didn't mention the B word, but there are a lot of people in this country who a minute ago were telling me how much they wanted to take back control. Are we now in a position where, because they do seem to be quite a crossover between these two positions, are we now in a position where we must take back control? Oh, not that sort of control. I don't get it. I don't get it. What does control even mean? Oh, Chant take care, David. Chantelle's in Oxford. Chantelle, what would you like to say? Hi. Uh, so I guess I'm coming from a point of, obviously, if you're going to have passports enforced, it's basically forcing more people to have to get the vaccine. But I think in order enc to Encouraging, that, because it, it's not... Let's, let's drop the words force and enforce. It, you, the, at the moment, it is nightclubs and some other settings. I totally agree, yeah. but I think a lot of these people are thinking it's being forced instead of it being encouraged. Right. And well, I let's, think let's a lot just of let's use the word encourage then, shall encouraged, we? Encouraged, yes. okay. <laughs> um, I think in order to explore that, you've got to explore the anti-vaccine um, conversation more. Um, I'm coming from a point of I have an illness. Um, and at the beginning of COVID, I had to shield, which yes. is probably one of the most horrific things I've ever been to. I'm, 
I was, I'm in my 30s and literally my simple independence was taken away because I wasn't allowed to shop. I wasn't allowed to get my groceries. I wasn't even allowed to touch my post. Gosh. So when I was offered the vaccines, I didn't hesitate. Of course. And I also, I've had COVID and um, it's, you know, again, it's pretty awful. Well, it, var- it varies. <laughs> it but so just to, be, just to be clear, the original advice when it was still an unknown, known um, yeah. w- for you and people like you was to t- take a- a- no risks whatsoever. As as it became better known, clearly you put yourself in positions where you were exposed to coronavirus and Absolutely. you caught it and your underlying condition didn't but render think, it worse than it, yeah. than it could have been. And I think the reason why I didn't hesitate is because I got diagnosed with Crohn's four years ago. Right. So I've been constantly battling with this form of control over my body and my mind, if Uh, that makes sense. Yes, it does make sense. Perfect. So um, I think in terms of regaining control over your body, you're going to cling to that in any way that you can, or at least I did. So I think where I'm coming from is I actually really struggle um, when it comes to the conversation of people who are anti-vax. Just because of my own experience, but I do force myself to have these conversations because I want to know more about where they're coming and, and from. Do, do they ever prove but, fruitful? No. Oh. But then the one thing I've just realised when I was listening to your conversation is when I think about it, I don't think I've ever spoken to someone who has health issues who is anti-vax. Right. Because I think unless you're coming from a situation where you are. Um, Oh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, health, um, health-wise, you're in a difficult vulnerable, situation. Vulnerable, susceptible. Yeah, vulnerable. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Yes, I welcome. don't think if you're coming from a health-wise sort of vulnerable place, I think it's a different perspective. Yeah. No, I hear you. I do. And and that notion of vulnerability, we think, perhaps naively, would be would be a game changer. I and I mean, you know, it's probably worth mentioning at this point that the number of right-wing radio hosts in America who were banging the anti-vax drum and therefore presumably would have been even more passionately opposed. I mean, they were passionately opposed to masks. So the idea of a so-called passport would have been um, like garlic to a vampire for them. And, and they're dying now at a rate of knots. I don't know how many right-wing radio hosts there are in America, and I can't claim to have heard of any of the three that have died already. But that's quite a quite an average isn't it it's quite a statistic you're making money from telling other people not to do it because it's not a massive risk and fast forward a couple of weeks or a couple of months you're literally dead of it and still it would appear that's not enough to uh i I don't know what the word would be deflate the nonsense thank you uh chantel you're you're absolutely right good luck in you i mean we've done this before trying to find ways that might help reach people who really don't want to be reached not only do they not want to be reached they're convinced that we're the ones with the problem james some people just do not think that we should head down a road where you have to disclose your health status for instance would you be happy to carry a certificate to show that you were in good mental health and thank you pat because i think you're, you're contributing to the program in good faith and you're making what what you think is, and I can see why you think is a sensible point, but I mean, the, the, the answer is pretty clear to that. There's a story in the newspaper today about a man who shot his wife dead during the coronavirus lockdown because she kept leaving tissues around the house and he was allowed a shotgun license despite previous problems with his mental health. The same, I, I don't want to breach any guidelines, but the, the, the we, there was also the, the fellow who I was on holiday, so I wasn't fully across the details, but the last shooting in in this country was undertaken by somebody who had, I think, a history of mental health problems and was still allowed a shotgun license. So, of course, we should be checking people's health before allowing them to, for example, get shotgun licenses, just as we should be checking people's health before allowing them to, for example, march into a, a very crowded room full of people not wearing masks. I, I, I mean, perhaps I'm missing something there, but I, I think we often, I mean, there's lots of jobs you, you have to have assessments for before you can go into certain contexts. There's two debates here. The idea that you would have to somehow leave the country if you refused to carry a coronavirus passport, you'd be deported or locked up, would be a very different debate from the one that we're having, which is about you can't go into areas of high transmission unless you can prove you haven't got it. And or, or at least come as close as possible to proving that you haven't got it. And it won't even work because they'll do what they've done from the very beginning. They won't go far enough or they'll do too little too late.
So unless you can go as far as possible towards proving that you haven't got it, you can't go into areas of high transmissibility. That's all they're saying, as far as I can tell. God knows I'm no fan of this government. But how you leap from that to thinking that they want to control you is currently beyond me. 03456060973. 11.36 is the time. Robert's in Brighton. Robert, what do you reckon? Uh, how you doing, James? I'm pretty um, good. Uh, for- First, I, look, I'd like to say, uh, you know, listen to Chantel, I, I admire how she's dealt with sort of the card she's been, been, yes. been dealt and, and how she handled the situation. I identify with it. Um, I'm in a similar enough situation. Okay. Um, had to, you know, shelter right from the start, not touch anything and made the dining room into a quarantine area every time we got a shipment or food or whatever else. Yeah, I remember that. Um, but I, look, I, I did want to say one thing, which is I... I really think one of the problems we have with this entire discussion, and it's sort of from the start, maybe it's where we are today in society, but we, we just overgeneralize too much. Yes, right? for I sure. Mean, so much separation of two completely different views as opposed to some middle ground where people can actually have differences of opinion and be rational. There's so much hyperbole. And it's like, you know, look, uh, here's an example, right? Anti-vaxxers is exactly the term that you, you yourself and everybody else is using for anyone who is concerned about this particular vaccine at this point in time. Fair enough, right? No. I mean, I can have concerns about the vaccine because... No, no, no. An- anti- va- anti- an- stuff, an- right? anti-vaxxer is someone who is opposed to it and doesn't, doesn't want to take yeah, it. Yeah, but, but I mean, my, my, my point is, is anti-vaxxer probably is a good generalization, which causes so much stir in people that you're against every single vaccine and everything the government does. And right now, right. It's, think, not my, it's not my experience. No, no, like, there's an awful not. lot of people who are at great pains to tell me they've been vaccinated against polio or, or, or TB or, or whatever okay. else it may be, but they've got yeah. a particular problem with this one because they've been right. misled into believing that it's, I think the phrase they use is experimental. So they, they, they've, they've been yeah, down that, you, that, that YouTube rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I'm not, and again, but I think there's a lot of people who could be concerned about this vaccine without actually being somebody who is, by the way, anywhere near your pedophile or any of the other kind of theorists, right? Well, I disagree. Um, or, Again, I disagree. Or, 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 I think it's just different flavors of delusion. And, and one is laughable, as you say, but the others are just as ridiculous. So, so you think that someone that maybe is concerned about this vaccine for health reasons or lack of longevity studies is a delusional? Yes. Really? Okay. Because it's been out long enough to prove that it's really okay, the, the, and the, it's really been through the through all the testing. The the proof that it is a bigger risk to get coronavirus than it is to get the vaccine is absolutely clear. Okay, so that's interesting. That's interesting. Well, so, I'm amazed well, you didn't realize. That. Is it the first time no, you've tuned no, no. in? It's, it's 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 not that I don't realize it. It's that if you said I'm a hundred percent going to get coronavirus or take the vaccine. It's a false comparison. Is yeah, the but problem, no one right? said because that. Because there's plenty of people, there's plenty no, of no people one said who can that, be really though. careful yes, but no one and said not that. get the vaccine. They can continue to but no one practice said, no one, no one has, and no social has, distancing. Yeah, I mean, you can, I guess. you could, and, and that's why I think probably it would be wrong to force anybody to get the vaccine. But you're in favor of isolation. You're just suggesting it should be self-imposed rather than... Um, societally imposed. I'm, I'm, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really... Inf- so, so, yes, so you choose, so not, to to you choose not to go to a nightclub, you choose not to go to a nightclub because you've got, quotes, concerns, end quotes, about the vaccine, but you'd be uncomfortable with being told that you're not allowed into the nightclub because you've got, quotes, concerns, end quotes, about the vaccine. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely answer your question on the, the the passports, right? Because I know it's... it's a, Hang it's on, I just clarify whether now, I... Did I describe you correctly then before? You've got... You, you, you would choose sorry, go not ahead, to... Yeah. You choose not to go into the nightclub because you're worried about catching coronavirus, but you would object to being told you can't go into the nightclub because you've got concerns about the vaccine. So I could choose where I want to go to make sure that I'm being careful about my own health. Absolutely. But it's not just your I own health, object, is it? I would object... I would... I would object to... Um, any kind of passports that don't give an alternative for testing negative. But, but right? I, yeah, you, but, you, I mean, you, testing you, negative you, in, 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 as an alternative to the passport is, is pretty clear. That seems pretty fair. But the, oh, is it? yeah, cause it's, it's funny because we never say that. We keep well, we, saying, every time I've done this phone, we've got prove that uh, you got a double jab. Or, right? or that you haven't got, or, or that you haven't got coronavirus. We have said oh, that yeah. already this hour, I think three gotcha. times. Gotcha. That's okay. No, that, that, which, so, is, which is helpful. Well, which yeah, helpful, but it's right? also because, repetitive. That's a big difference, isn't it? Well, yes, yes and no, because the difference is, of course, and perhaps the difference, 
that you're missing is that vaccines aren't just about your personal health. Because because a vaccinated people, population is an immune population. So no, the more it's not. people, that's, the, see, that's that's such a falsity. No, it, the vaccinated it, population <laughs> is not an immune population. They can still catch it. Yes, of course they, they can. can. Still pass it, it along. It, it, forgive me. So immunized, really, an immunized population. The more people are vaccinated, the more immunized a population is. So it's not just an issue of your own personal health. And that's the so, point. So not, that's the not, distinction but between immune, are they? that they're immunized. So you can never remove it. Well, you have actually in the past with some viruses, but this isn't yeah. the this isn't the gotcha that you think it is. The more see, people, is, the more people James, that are is, vaccinated, the, the safer. Is, if you'd allow me to, if you'd, if you'd allow me to finish, the more people are vaccinated, the safer everybody is. Which is why the conflation of vaccination with testing is, forgive me, very selfish. So, so I, you keep I talking about your personal I, health. I love it. I, honestly, I, I love it when people go over and they want to play the selfish card. But in fact, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I laugh at laugh at me, but let me finish now. No, because in, because but, I'm but not playing fact, a selfish card. I, I, I'm no, describing no, in, in, the conflation of testing with vaccination. And the phrase you've used, I think, more than any other in the course of this conversation, is my personal health. We're not having a is, phone in, Robert, about your personal is, health. I, I, We're I, having I, a conversation I, and a phone I, in, I, I and we've been we've been clear we've been clear from the start that this is a conversation about public health, which you haven't mentioned once. So, so on public health. What happens is, is everybody who gets vaccinated actually now, if you really stop and think about it, have taken care of their personal health because they're protected from getting sick. No, again, I'm afraid that I'm I'm afraid that's not true because the people who are least likely, well, you, you can pretend that you believe that, but I don't have to join in. The people who are least likely to suffer badly from coronavirus are the ones who are being most altruistic and public spirited when they get vaccinated. It's why it's so important to encourage people who have been persuaded that it doesn't pose a major health risk to them that they must get vaccinated in order to protect all of the people to whom it does pose a major health risk. This is this is ABC stuff, Robert. I mean, it's been going on for 18 months. If you haven't worked this out yet, I very much doubt I can help you. Yeah, I, 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 James, honestly. Hey, it's, Robert, it's honestly. A bit, it's, it's a bit insulting to put it that way because, in fact, the people that get the vaccine, it's great. And I think the people it, who It's not insulting to put it that people, way. It's factual, people, Robert. It's exactly factual. The reason why the onus is upon persuading people to whom the virus does not pose a major health risk to get the vaccine is precisely, incontrovertibly, and completely to protect the people to whom the virus does pose a major health risk. That's not insulting. It's not laughable. And it's not wrong. It's just science. So, James... The people that actually get the vaccine have now protected themselves. They can still pass it on to other people, whether or not. And vaccinated people will suffer a lot less than unvaccinated people. So how are they protecting someone who is unvaccinated or unable to get the vaccine? No, that's that's not what we're talking about. People who are unable to get the vaccine, Robert, are not people who've got, quotes, concerns, end quotes, about the vaccine. And there it is. They but can well, be a combination well tried. Of yeah, of course they can, but that's not that's not other. what you're talking about. Society also. Uh, no, in fact, I am. Society. In fact, I am. Oh, okay, you are now, but you haven't been for the <laughs> no, last ten no, minutes. No, so that's absolutely I, fine. James, to be honest I, with you, Robert. I, I am. But society but also is, moves. Collect. Up. Society also moves collectively to protect people who can't get the vaccine. And the more people that are vaccinated, the safer the people... No, hang on, I haven't finished speaking. The safer the people who, for whatever reason, can't get vaccinated are. That, again, is not an opinion. That is science. No, how? Tell me more about that. How? (laughs) Well, I did say, I think it's now 11.45, I think three minutes ago, I said, if you haven't worked this out for yourself by now, it's highly highly unlikely that I can help you. I'll tell you what. No, how can you? Listen back to the podcast. I've already explained it twice. How can someone who can still pass the virus on, even with the vaccine, yes. protect someone who isn't vaccinated? Because Tell they reduce. Okay, because the likelihood of that happening is reduced by the vaccine. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Vaccinated people How? are less infectious than vaccinated people. That is not true. That okay. is not what well, the studies are showing. Well, it's not what you... the CDC is showing. Okay. It's not what the World Health Organization is showing. Okay, so why does vaccination reduce infection? It reduces the sickness that you get. No, 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 no. Why does it reduce new cases? Why does it reduce the number of infections? It's reducing the number of people who are showing signs. No, no, no. It's reducing the number of people who are testing positive. Why is that, do you think? 
who's going? Are they actually? Do they actually have a study Mate, for I've, testing I've, everybody I've, who has it? Because I they think, don't. Well, no, James, I've, they I don't. I think you've had your fun. I think we both know that this hasn't gone quite as well as you were intending, but I hope it's been helpful to people who've fallen for the same sort of crud that you're peddling. Imposing vaccine passports is likely to make hesitant people even more reluctant to get COVID jabs. I think the why of it is quite straightforward, actually. The first caller touched on it. If they are concerned about COVID vaccination, then being forced to have it or not being or being forced to have it or not being given access due to the passport enforces these fears that there's something wrong with it and that it's being forced on the population. Any forcing of something makes some people believe more that there is a nefarious purpose behind it. And that, I think, is the problem uh, perfectly articulated by Howard in Reading. If you're coming at this under the belief either that it's all part of a satanic paedophile conspiracy or, like our last caller, um, uh, believing apparently that vaccination doesn't reduce transmissibility or that vaccinating the population isn't the best way of minimizing the presence of a virus in it, then everything that is presented to you by the people who are responsible for public health looks like part of the conspiracy. So unpicking the passport question is probably the easiest bit of this conversation. Why on earth would uh, requiring you to have a passport to get into a nightclub make you less likely to get a vaccine answer well because they're trying to control us and this is a way of making it compulsory rather than voluntary even if it is only a nightclub it's a nightclub today tomorrow it will be i don't know schools and supermarkets and, and everything else which is tragic because it's upside down the more people that are vaccinated the safer the population is the safer everybody is especially the people that can't get vaccinated for whatever reason and yet this poison is in the the, the, the bloodstream of the nation it's in the in the marketplace on a scale that I'm not sure the government fully yet appreciate. Although thankfully, thankfully, the numbers um, with the uh, hesitancy or the lethargy, if you like, in, in the, some demographics, the numbers are still largely cause for some confidence. Obviously, the schools reopening, as Scotland have just discovered, could um, change the direction of traf traffic quite profoundly. But as ever, with coronavirus, hopefully temporarily. Um, I did ask what was happening in other countries. Sally is in Leran in France. Sally, what can you tell us? Um, yeah, well, I've been here for about 11 months, so I've seen both the UK part, you know, when the pandemic first happened, and um, <clears throat> since then I've been here. And the vaccination programme was going a bit slowly. I think everybody knew that in the UK. Um, and then Macron brought in this announcement that there would be um, vaccine passports. Ah, this is fascinating. To go into yes. restaurants, um, yeah, restaurants and cafes. And it sort of went beyond, it goes beyond that as well, because if you go to a hospital and you want to accompany, you know, your, um, somebody else, not, not in the case of an emergency, I think that is an exception. But if you were just going into the hospital for a consultation, then you must produce either your vaccine passport or a, a negative test. Um, and they have also made it compulsory. It's just um, kicked off this week, I think, for health um, professionals. They have to be vaccinated. So it's going on on a wide scale. And I mean, I live in quite a small village, really. Um, so, and I'm, I'm not of an age who goes clubbing, so I can't really tell you about that. But well, in never, say, village, never say never. Never say never. Say. Never, well, sorry. no, but I used to do that. Stuff, jamais so, dit jamais. You know, been there, done that. <laughs> okay. um, but in, in in our little village, we have um, something that's quite common in this area, p perhaps all over France, where they have a sort of street market on a Friday night in yes. the summer, and it's all food stalls, and everybody piles down there. And um, and it was when when they brought it in, and it must have been about two weeks ago, I think, that it it became compulsory. So you'd already had to produce it to go into a cafe. So we have one cafe in our village and, you know, we'd been down there for a drink or a meal or something. And it's easy. I mean, you just go and sit at the table and the person comes up to you and they just say, can I see your pass? And your pass is very, very easily loaded. There's a, um, an app in France called Toussaint Covid and um, you just um, flash your QR code. I, it, I've got one here. That we, I've got one yeah. here. I've got it on the NHS um, app. It, it is incredibly yeah. simple. Well, it, it and works it's brilliantly, a, and that's what people do. They just carry their phones around. So what do you um, hear then when you're, when you're listening to the radio? And I, I've been away for a couple of weeks, obviously, but before I went away, the, the 
uh, this idea that there's some sort of sinister subterfuge underway. Yeah. And, it's, and it's there in France well, as well. I've seen protests in France about it. There was one in Italy yeah. at the weekend. And the, yeah. and the kind of conspiracy theorists jump on these protests as evidence that other countries are in the opposite position to the one you describe. It's like the massive majority of people are happily and quietly going along with it. And then you have a protest. It's like the people turning up outside the Loose Women studio in the hope of storming the BBC. They think somehow they're representative of a, of a bigger truth. What do you hear when you hear those people talking? And then you go to the cafe and see the reality of it. Um, well, I've heard, you know, I've, I've, you don't hear an awful lot on the television or the radio. They you know, don't give a lot of air time to it in France. I wonder if there's a lesson there. I've heard it there. a lot on UK radio. I listen to LBC yes. all the time. Um, but you don't hear it in France. And that is a bit the general attitude. So I think that, you know, they will say, yes, there is, um, there is a, you know, there have been demonstrations in five cities this weekend. Mm. And it's always the big cities. Um, it, it just, it just sounds like fringe activity. Well, it is fringe and, activity. And the I think is. that's the way Macron has played it as yeah. well. I think he said to himself, right, to get our country out of this mess that we're in, people have got to be vaccinated. They've absolutely got to. And if they won't come to us, we'll have to, you know, kind of force them a little bit um, to be blunt. Or, or robustly so encourage think, them, limit what they can yeah. do to, to the point well, where yes, they think, oh, hang on. Do. You don't yeah. have to get vaccinated. You can keep producing tests. But sure. from October, the tests that were free in France, because the tests were free in Fran are free in France at the moment still, will become paying. So those people who want to keep producing tests to go out will have to pay. And that, obviously that will have... Again, a robust encouragement to do what is in the interests of the entire population rather Absolutely. than perhaps the personal... And I, I, you know, I mean, the people that I know, um, and I don't know a lot of French people, I'm afraid, but, you know, the English community around here, sure. people say, well, I think he's played a blinder. And yet you it's know, not going to work here, happening. and that's fascinating. And I wonder if it is linked to the, to the comparison you just made of media coverage. There's a huge danger yes. in this country. Of I really of think so. Because it's yes, not, it, uh, this do, research that we're discussing says it probably won't work here because it's going to push people further down the rabbit hole of, of scepticism. Whereas because well, the scepticism hadn't taken hold in France in the way that perhaps it has here, they just well, went, oh. But, but then look at the fact that Macron dissed the um, AstraZeneca. You remember that? Quite early on. Yes, he you know, did. He really yeah. kind of mucked things up, that didn't absolutely he? Absolutely dropped a huge clangor on talking that. About, but that's been forgotten, you see, because they just, changed program they changed the message they kept with the message the news programs just brightly talk about you know they did they did go through a phase where they said mm, the vaccination centers are a bit empty yeah <laughs> and then macron brought in this announcement and suddenly they were all filling up you know i think i saw so, ursula von der leyen saying that the, the whole of the european union is now at 70 percent fully vaccinated and a yeah. lot of european countries have Very been va good. vaccinating children as well over 12 Absolutely. Well, exactly, and they're going back to school From tomorrow, the as well. in fact, the kids here. And, <sighs> and the other thing is that the, the, the barriers, the, um, the gestes barrières, as they call them in French, um, <laughs> the masks, I know, the, the barrier gestures, oh, um, yes. they, the masks and not so much the social distancing, I have to say. But um, So I was going to say for our street market, yes. In order to make it fair for the cafe, who had to ask people already by law for oh, these passes, wow. but they didn't have to at the street market, not really, because it was all open air. And if you do a takeaway, yes. but you see, the street market is much worse than the cafe, really, because it's got trestle tables all the way down the street. So they've in introduced the it there as well. So they, so they, the, I think the mayor must have made this decision himself, and he had somebody at the sort of beginning of the street where people file in, you know, and and got people to show their passes, yes, and and then that made the cafe feel it, it could open as well, because otherwise it would just have been shunned. Well, everyone because, would have got an outdoor you know, coffee, an outdoor... Yeah. Um, no, so what's my favourite? People are going along with it, you see, you know. And I, I hear you, I, and, and I don't know. I'm fascinated by what you said about them. You've taken me up to the news. It's the only reason I'm moving on, because I do wonder whether part we've created part of the problem by treating people as... as I mean, back to the bloody B word, aren't we? 
you know, Andrea Ledson versus Pascal Lamy, which also gives us a nice Anglo-French angle on, on the conversation, pretending almost or being compelled to pretend that Pascal Lamy's understanding of the World Trade Organization is somehow equal and opposite to Andrea Lamy's. You put people on who explain the science, you put people on who represent 90 odd percent of scientific consensus, and then you give the same amount of time to a guest or a speaker who is the polar opposite. And that creates the idea in the minds of listeners. I hope we do the opposite on this program, but I know it's not by any stretch of the imagination foolproof, literally. Um, you, you, you give them some airtime, you pull apart all of their arguments, you send them away with a flea in their ear, and most people listening go, oh, so that's not true at all. Of course, the more people get vaccinated, the safer a population is. But I never know how many people you reach because the loudest voices are the ones that are... Um, let me put this politely. The most eccentric. While listening to you today, James, I have just loaded my COVID passport into my Apple wallet on my phone. It took seconds to do. Where, oh, where, oh, where is the problem? I, the, the, I, well, the problem for me with hours like the last one is maybe there isn't actually a real problem. And this slightly generous attempt to find it. What's the problem here? There, there isn't one. You just get a succession of... of <laughs> Un inaccurate answers to the question, uh, varying degrees of delusion, varying degrees of arrogance or, 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 or some misplaced belief that you understand the facts better than the, than the best scientists in the world do, or you found one on YouTube who apparently queries the science and the more you dig into their provenance and qualifications, the less convinced you should be that they're worth listening to, but by then perhaps it's too late for you. But yeah, I'll leave you with that thought. Where, oh, where, oh, where is the problem? And, and that was a great call from France because the reason why Johnson's brought it in or is poised to bring it in, I think is in large part because Macron's tactic worked. The research that's published today on the front of The Guardian makes a very strong case for it not being poised to work here. And I wonder whether that's demographic. Could even be cultural. You know, the French were just being a little bit laissez-faire. There you go, to coin a French, not coin, to use a French phrase. Just shape your head like that, Keith. It's the perfect phrase to use in this context. The French were being a bit laissez-faire. They weren't getting around to getting vaccinated. So Macron gave them a kick up the... Uh, Derriere. Oh, it's all going. Oh, O-level French is coming through like a freight train today. So he gave him a bit of a kick up the derriere and told him to stop being so laissez-faire. I'm even writing poems in French now. And the British problem is not with people who are just a bit lethargic or a bit laissez-faire about it. It's with people who have fallen down some of these holes. And requiring them to get a passport to get into a nightclub is not going to provide a ladder out of a rabbit hole in the way that it provided a catalyst for lethargic or, or, or unmotivated French people to get out there and get a vaccine. Ooh, that almost feels like a bit of a moment, that, doesn't it? Like a, a moment of clarity, or even perhaps a distant drop of a penny. We shall see, we shall see.